Hey YouTube, it's Jay. And today we are talking about nine ball break number six. Now this is the last of the nine ball breaks. And there's a reason that we're going to this one last. Um, this break has two cases where you would use it. Number one is all five of the previous breaks failed. Um, you've tried them from each of them from both sides of the table and you're just not making balls. So you need to try to mix it up and do something a little different. Uh, the second case is you have a breaking box that you have to break in at the head of the table. And so we talked about the breaking box up here. Uh, this is the bottom breaking box. This is where the breaking box is not on the head string. Um, and so I've marked, the, I've marked the box here and there's two ways this box is implemented. Uh, either so first of all, it's an 18 inch box. So you can see from here to here on the table, and you'll see this a little better when I zoom in. Um, I've marked where the 18 inches uh, side to side is. Um, and then it's either nine inches up from the rail, which puts the center of the breaking box on the diamond, or it's 18 inches up from the rail, which puts the center here. Um, so this break, is for those two circumstances. Uh, I would probably not play this break as an early break unless just everything was going wrong. Um, this is a slam break. So slam breaks, if you remember, a slam break is a break where you're just trying to hit it really, really hard, hope something goes in, and to control the cue ball so you have a shot after. And it's more important that the slam break is hard and scatters the balls than it is that you have a follow on shot. Um, in this case, controlling the cue ball is not a primary goal of this break. The primary goal of this break is you've been trying other things, you're not making any balls and so you got to do something, you got to mix something up. Uh, and so you use this break to try to make balls. Um, and you're willing to give up control of the cue ball in return for a chance to make balls. Now that doesn't mean that you don't try to control the cue ball. It just means that that's not a primary goal of this break. The primary goal of this break is to make balls. Um, this break is good for ones where you are racking with a wooden rack. It's also good for ones with a template rack and the nine ball on the center, on the, on the spot. Um, I'll be racking it with a wooden rack. And again, the, the goal is to break them up and hopefully make something because you haven't been making it other ways. So, how does this break work? Well, so what we're going to do is we're always, regardless of whether the box is here or here, we're always going to put the cue ball right there. Moving it up here does not really help you. It actually makes bridging it kind of awkward. If you put it at the nine inch mark or, or if it's a bigger box, I mean, you can push it up a little bit if you want to, but we're going to use this rail to give us some elevation and, and some extra power in our break. Remember that when you break from out in the middle of the table and you're having a bridge on the table, uh, you have to work harder to get the same power. So since we have the rail available to us, we'll go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, and again, you can do this from either side depending on what, what's working. Uh, we're going to put it right there at the very boundary of that nine inch box. Okay, so for aiming points on this, from that side, we're going to be aiming straight at the seven. We're going to be aiming at the top of the seven. Uh, from the other side, it'd be the top of the six. We're going to hit this, and you might might play with your English a little bit here, or with your spin a little bit. Um, we're going to try to hit this with about a half a tip of top to slow the cue ball down into the center of the table, just like you do with the other breaks where you're trying to control it to the center of the table. Uh, we're going to put half a tip top on it, and we're going to just hit the living heck out of this ball. Um, you're going to drive the cue down into the table so you get the nice bend on the cue. 
which is going to help with the snap when the when the it's going to help get the one or the cue off the table to hit the to hit the one and it's going to give you that nice crash. This is the template rack uh, with the nine racked on the spot. Um, so I am changing my point of aim a little bit for this. Uh, with the nine on the spot, my point of aim is the crevice between the seven and the eight is my point of aim. That's what I'm aiming at. Not a great break. And again, you can see that with the, with the magic rack up there, this really doesn't yield results. Uh, I'm not a fan of this break, but if you've got a breaking box at the top, you really don't have any chance, any choice. Um, you can help this though by you can help make a ball by using draw a, a little, you know, a half a tip of draw on this break will help to make a ball. Um, but it's also going to send the cue ball to the top of the top of the table, and you're going to find that you will quite often not have a shot or you'll have to play a bank shot. Um, let me show you what it looks like with draw on this and then we'll go back to the wooden rack. Okay, that was about half a tip of draw. Again, we didn't make anything. Um, it's very tough to make balls out of the breaking box. Nobody likes it for that reason. A lot of times it ends up with dry break after dry break after dry break. Now, of course, if I'm not making them from that side, then I'm going to switch sides and try it from the other side over here. Sometimes that'll work, sometimes it won't. From a wooden rack, so there's a little bit of looseness in the rack compared to the template. Um, Again, if there are openings in the balls, you want to break into the openings. So if the openings are on the left side, you want to break from the right. If the openings are on the right, you want to break from the left. So any, anytime you see cracks in the rack, you always want to drive into those. And you can see, uh, not a fan of this break but sometimes you have no choice. Now, remember, I'm racking these good up here. I'm not, I'm not like slug racking this or anything like that. Um, just because I'm not making balls with a frozen rack. Think, think about this. If the rack's frozen, okay? If the rack's frozen, you're never going to get to this break because one of those other breaks is going to work. You're, this is a break of last resort. Uh, with a wooden rack. Um, let's try this from the other side. So my point of aim is, my initial point of aim is a six, and of course I'm going to adjust off of that. Okay, so I made a ball from that side. So I would continue to break from that side. Um, can I see the one? I can see it. I've got a really painful combination on the four, or I could just play safe and duck behind, send the cue ball down behind the four. Um, I could also try to do something weird, like nip off the one, come over here and straight across into the three. That's that's a re real shot here. Uh, so is the off the rail, off the four carom. I could try to play the one off the rail, off the four in the corner, um, which is probably what I'd do here. It's not a, as difficult a shot as it looks. And, and I really don't have to worry about leave because the three's in the corner, so now I'm off and running. Um, but, you know, that's just the goal of that break is make a ball and hopefully leave yourself something you can shoot at. All right, so um, let's break this ten times. Uh, let's do our 10 breaks. We're going to do 10 breaks with a wooden rack and evaluate it from there. So our main criteria here, our number one criteria is do we make a ball? Um, if we make a ball, we're, we're happy. 
if we make a ball and get a lead on the one, that's incredibly good. Uh, if we don't make a ball, uh, then, then it's a, a bad. So our, our, our goal is make a ball. Our stretch goal is make a ball, have a shot on the one. Uh, and then our, our downside is we don't make anything. So let's do our 10 breaks. Alright, so that's our sixth and final nine ball break. Uh, we'll be moving forward into eight ball break next, breaks next. Now some of the nine ball breaks are pretty standard regardless of what game you're playing. I'm not going to rehash those. Um, I'll point them out when they I'll point them out in the first video of the eight ball breaks, um, like that power break from the side. That's pretty standard. In eight ball, the break from here in the center with uh, top English is is pretty standard. So I'm not gonna redo those and try to milk videos out of extra shots. Um, I'm just going to identify those or call them out and then add in eight ball specific breaks like the, the break to make the eight uh, from the side, hitting the second ball and, and the... Um, there's a little difference in the way that you line up this break I'm going to talk about that. Other than that, um, the, the basic breaks apply. If you like what you see, hit like, subscribe, ding the notification bell, and we'll see you next time.